The doorkeeper says, go away. The door is barred. I'm sorry, but you can't enter. Love says, this door is my own. I have the key. The doorkeeper says, but it is all dark inside. Love says, I am the light. Open the door, dot by Molana. As he walked the streets, head down, lost in thought, he couldn't help but feel a sense of sadness and disappointment wash over him. He had always hoped for more, but it seemed that no matter how hard he tried, he just couldn't catch a break. The darkness and cold of the winter night seemed to seep into his bones, weighing him down with despair and hopelessness. He had long ago given up on the idea of finding happiness, and he was resigned to a life of loneliness and misery. But then, as he passed by the old bar on the corner, something caught his eye. Through the window, he saw a woman, a spark of colour in the midst of his dark and gloomy life. She was sipping on a martini, looking as glowing and radiant. With a deep breath, he pushed open the door and stepped inside. The warmth of the bar enveloped him as he made his way towards the bar, where the bartender, Sam, greeted him with a friendly smile. Chapter 1 Time, God, Math She was examining the infographics of the pub's name on the window, particularly the small sphere behind the sigma sign and the sharp angles of sigma against the round nature of the globe. She didn't like the dominance of hard rules over soft nature. Even now, she was staring at the sign, feeling the cold. Still unhappy with the sign? Matt asked her. Actually, I feel okay looking at it from inside, Rose replied, finding it easier to appreciate the sign from a more generous perspective. But the perspective doesn't change the fact, does it? Matt asked. There isn't any fact associated with the sign, just a message, Rose said. And yes, perspective can dramatically change a message. Matt took off his jacket, feeling the warmth of the pub. Shiraz was struggling to carry two cocktail glasses and a pint and signal to Matt for help. For you, Rose, three Gordon's gin, one vodka, half Kina Lillette, and a twisted lemon peel for garnish, Shiraz said as he gently placed the glass on the table. Just perfect, Rose replied admiringly. So, I was saying about this algorithm of God, Matt excitedly continued his earlier lecture. Everybody knows that in fifty years, machines are going to govern humankind. I didn't know that, Shiraz mumbled. Neither did I, Rose added. Okay, let's just assume that, to save some useless conversations, Matt said. The real problem is that nobody is working on designing algorithms for the machines that are going to become future gods. We have to explain what we really need from gods through algorithms. We have to quantify things, like, how can we tell a machine about the value of a human life? The prerequisite for logical decisions is quantifying all elements and having an objective. Human life is priceless. Rose exclaimed, Matt, you can't say that to a machine. If we can't find a common language, then the future gods would label each of us with a price. Then they rearrange the world's order to potentially increase the development or evolution efficiency. That can be a catastrophe unless we develop a logical language for human matters. We have to make sure we provide the right perspective for the machines, her rose. Let's say, there is a choice between murdering 100 people to save another 200. A machine would say that is positive. Henry Kissinger and Paul Warfield might have been thinking logically they were serving the righteousness while they were killing innocent people. Rose, would you do the same? Rose, of course not. I am not a murderer. Matt, exactly. Because you are rather proud of being human than a logic executor. The question is still on the table though. How to save 200 people? One may say let's write an algorithm to anticipate the future decisions of each individual and based on the outcomes we value the people. Then we can talk about the evolution of societies towards a known objective. We hand in the responsibility of achieving the goals by the valuation methodology to future gods. So we would constrain gods' behavior and make them accountable. Shiraz, there is a problem with that. The residuals of balancing the equations. 
7 billion people are living and influencing each other on an interdependent platform of this planet and you are looking at their decisions say every second if not millisecond. The residuals might form greater anomalies and create inevitable miracles. And what exactly your God's responsibility lays over such anomalies? Matt, if there is no perfect algorithm to anticipate then we have no perfect God or gods. For units of alcohol were getting into Shiraz's veins. He slowly raised his glass and said, to the shortcuts, Matt didn't like Shiraz, not because he kept calling him math but rather deep down he envied how easily Shiraz treated the problems and sought the shortcuts. He was the only chap in town who provided original ideas through his ultimate laziness. It might be related to the Shiraz wine he liked, Shiraz city in Iran, or other genes he picked up from his Pakistani origins. A time traveler doesn't have to solve billions of equations to project the future with the risk of anomalies out of convergence residuals. Shiraz continued. Matt, that potentially creates a vicious loop. What if one gets the future vision and perturbs the stream of events that shape the same future? Shiraz, no. Because the first vision of the future would then be incorrect. The future is an outcome of everything including any potential perturbation one might cause. Matt, future is absolute. That's what you mean, Shiraz, I am saying tomorrow will come one way or another. That is the ultimate result of today's actions. Seeing it earlier and potentially changing it must have already been taken into account for tomorrow. No need for math. If we have or don't have a perfect God, that must have been taken into account yesterday, today and tomorrow. So chillax, bro Rose, Shiraz, you are assuming time is linear. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow seem cliché in modern science. So what if time bends? Shiraz, still on an investigatory element, we can safely assume it is linear considering our short time living span of time. Rose, good job with the element story. Yet, we need to integrate these elements to get a meaningful overall response. Shiraz, too difficult, Rose, to sum up 7 billion living bodies with wide maneuvering spaces for making decisions in order to anticipate the future. I bet even a potential god doesn't bother to have the attempt, Rose, what if the answer is hidden in the overall behavior of humans? The evolution. Matt, let's take a step back, Rose. If we accept the world is unlimited with lots of equations that scares Shiraz, it implicitly provides the proof of other planets with living creatures that potentially can be far more advanced than the current humans. They must be ahead of us on the evolution track. Then, do you say their evolution should provide the answer to the original question of how to quantify the value of individuals and the objective of a society? Rose Far more advanced is still a relative matter to our current position and might be yet essentially preliminary with the constraints of our mindsets. Humans might achieve the perfect society through the current painful experience of trials and errors. Shiraz, I was never convinced trial and errors would lead to any perfect matter. It might be the case of accepting there is not such a thing called perfect. Neither for any god nor human. Of course, other than Chris when he combs his hair for hours to capture the perfect look. All three of them burst into laughter.